Shalom, welcome to Rob on the Rock. I'm Rob Vanoff, and today I want to do something a little on the technical side, looking at this word Sabbath. How will we get it from the Hebrew Shabbat, which goes into the Aramaic Shabbata, and then into the Greek Shabbata or Sabbata. Finally, into uh, today, we have the English word Sabbath. If you were to look it up in a Greek uh, New Testament, you would often find it in the plural form. Morphologically, you'd be looking at a plural form Sabbaths, but that's not how to translate it. You translate it most of the time, unless context makes it absolutely clear, in the singular. And I'll show you why that's the case today. So what we're going to look at today are the first several occurrences in the Greek Torah of the Hebrew word Sabbath. How is it transliterated into Greek? And why is it in the plural? When in the Hebrew, Shabbat is clearly in the singular. Why so many cases? If you are reading in the New Testament or in the Septuagint and you encounter the word Sabbath, and if you do a parsing of the form there, you'll find that very often it's a plural noun in the Greek. And this has caused all sorts of problems for people. I remember Harold Camping years ago, probably over 20 years ago, explaining Matthew 28 verse 1 as the end of the Sabbaths, because it's sabaton in the plural genitive form, and at the, the first of the Sabbaths. And he used this as an argument that the Sabbath had been done away and that Sunday was the new Sabbath. So you can see that's one real imaginative and absolutely incorrect and uninformed reading um, that this can be real crazy. So what I want to do is clear that for you so that you can uh, understand what's going on. So the first point here uh, is to look at the transliteration. So remember, there's no Greek word Sabbath, right? This is a Hebrew word, Shabbat, coming from Jewish culture into the Greek language. And so in the Greek Torah, the word Shabbat was not translated, but rather transliterated. However, we need to pause and clarify that it was transliterated not from Hebrew into Greek, but from Aramaic into Greek. In other words, the Jewish communities that were the first recipients of the Greek translation of the Torah, Greek was their main language along with Aramaic. They already knew important words such as We've discovered the Pascha. Instead of Pesach, they knew the word Pascha. Instead of the Hebrew man for manna, they knew mana, mana, which is Aramaic. And what we're going to see here today is it's the same with the word Shabbat. It's not the word Shabbat that comes into Greek through transliteration, but the Aramaic word Shabbata, Shabbata. This is right in line with uh, many other Aramaic phrases that come into the Greek rather than Hebrew into Greek. So my first point here is in the ancient Greek Torah, uh, Shabbata. Now remember in Hebrew or Aramaic, we see the shin and we say a sh sound. Uh, in Greek, there is no sh letter, so they used the sigma. But because they understood what the sigma stood for, they knew that this was a sh sound, not a s, even though through uh, uh, its transmission in Western languages, we learn it as a s, Sabbath, Sabbata. But if we go back in time, they're going to be saying Shabbata because they knew what this was. If we look at the Greek of Shabbata, which is just an absolute wonderful transliteration, accurate translation or transliteration of the Aramaic Shabbat, Shabbata in Aramaic becomes uh, Shabbata in Greek. It is a neuter plural. It looks and sounds like in the Greek language, a neuter plural. So, but it's a singular. It's singular in Aramaic, Shabbata. But in Greek grammar, a noun is required to have certain forms. And for one, Greek does not like nouns that end in the letter tav. Rather, it wants to end in a vowel if there's a tav, or the tav will drop off altogether. And then there's different case endings. So there's a lot of technical info here 
uh, pertaining to how the Greek language works, that if you haven't taken Greek, um, would be a rabbit trail for me to get into right now. But what you're going to find, if you look in the Gospels, for example, Matthew 28, 1, and it says, Nia, uh, te mia ton sabaton, you're going to look in a lexicon or an or a analytical um, uh, tool, and it'll say this is a plural. And so you're going to be thinking, oh, plural, this means Sabbaths. That's not what it means at all. I'm trying to give you the background for what's going on here. It is functioning as a singular from the beginning of its transliteration into Greek, which is these passages of the Torah that we're going to look at. Okay, so the first one here we're going to look at is Exodus 16.23. Shabbata anapusis hagiato kuriu aurion. This is... Tomorrow is a Shabbata. Now, tomorrow is uh, Aurion, is way at the end here. Shabbata. Tomorrow is a Shabbata, a rest holy to the Lord. Shabbata. It's just talking about a singular day. But if we were to uh, analyze this word Shabbata, we would parse it in Greek as morphologically, what we say, as a neuter plural. Later in the same passage, Exodus 16.25, Estengar Shabbata Semeron to Kurio. For today is Shabbata unto the Lord. For today is Shabbata. Now again, we'd look at this word Shabbata and we'd say this is a neuter plural. But to, we're not going to translate it as a plural. For today is Sabbaths to the Lord it makes no sense. And we know that the early recipients... Uh, Jewish communities understood this as an Aramaic term, not as a Greek term. Let's continue. I've got a few more here. Exodus 16, 26. Again, the seventh day is Shabbata. Te dehimera te dome Shabbata. The hebdome, that is the seventh day, is Shabbata. Now, of course, hemera, that's singular. Hemera, that's a feminine singular noun. But it's Shabbata. So again, we, if we wanted to look at the parsing, technical Greek parsing of Shabbata, we would say this is a neuter plural. But it's clearly a singular by meaning contextually. The seventh day is Shabbata, not Sabbaths, plural. That would be silly. Let's continue. Exodus 16, 29, still in Exodus. This is when God reveals the Shabbata and the Mana. So we have two Aramaic terms actually being given together in the Greek Torah, Mana and Shabbata. They're both given in the wilderness, Exodus 16. For the Lord has given you this day, the Shabbata. So here we have, Tain uh, Himeran Tautain, this day, right? So this is feminine singulars in the accusative case, but it's talking about a singular. Tashabata, however, is a neuter plural construction. So here we have the ta, which is the definite article in Greek, and that also is neuter plural, ta shabata. So by attraction, this Aramaic uh, word that's been transliterated into Greek, shabata, now, now obtains an actual Greek uh, definite article that's in the neuter plural. But we're still not going to say, for the Lord has given you this day, the Sabbaths, right? Nonsensical. That's not intended at all. Uh, and then we go to the Ten Commandments. Uh, Exodus 20, verse 8, we see here, Mnestete ten hemeran ton shabbaton hagiad zenautain. So here we go. Mnestete ten hemeran. Remember the day, ton shabbaton. Ton Shabbaton, technically, the accents on the Shabbaton. Ton Shabbaton. Well, uh, and then it says, Hagiadzein uh, Autain, to, to make it holy, to make her holy. Autain is feminine singular. So it's talking about the Himera, the day of Sabbaths. We do not translate this, uh, this Ton Sabbaton as the, of the Sabbaths. 
that's not what is meant here. We're in line with, now notice we've gone from ta, uh, Shabbata to Ton Shabbaton. It's now in the genitive case. So the case has changed, but it's still definite article um, followed by the noun in the plural form. And now Ton Shabbaton is what we see also in um, the Gospels. For example, uh, Matthew 28. Then we have Exodus 20 verse 10 is the last one I have here to look at. The seventh day, there is Shabbata to the Lord your God. I probably should say there is a. Te dehemera te hebdome Shabbata kurio to teosu. The seventh day, there is Shabbata. So again, we've seen in all these instances the introduction of a new term for the Greek audiences and written uh, in the Greek letters, but it's an Aramaic word already known by the audience. So they weren't being confronted with a new Greek word, but rather a, a word they already knew, the word Shabbat in Hebrew or Shabbata in Aramaic. So this video here, I just wanted to show quickly why when you find the word Sabbath, particularly in the New Testament, if you do the lexical analysis, you're going to see that it comes up most of the time in a plural form, but the translation will be singular. Translation will be singular. And that is because this is a transliterated word from Aramaic into Greek. And when that happened, it started functioning because the Aramaic word in Greek sounded like a neuter plural noun in the Greek language because of that ta ending. And so it was treated that way uh, grammatically. But in terms of meaning, uh, unless the context makes it absolutely clear, we're dealing with uh, the plural analysis of a, or parsing of the Greek word, but yet we're going to translate it as a singular. Shalom.